All right, just recorded a video sort of on how to learn openings in general, but specifically the classical Sicilian. And now I am very excited to try to play the classical Sicilian. And so, of course, I will only get white or have deep play opponents play d4. Um, a friend of mine was talking about bishop c4 the other day, so I was kind of excited to give it a try. Against knight f6, the idea is queen e2 and a quick e5. Against knight c6, I guess I'll play knight e2. I feel like knight f3 gives them bishop g4, and I don't want to give them that for free. So now they can play e5. I think I'm going to try to keep my center together. I'll make useful moves. Make it a little harder for them to move the knight and castle. Do I want to play a4? Hmm. I don't think I want to castle queenside, because they get so much tempo with moves like b5. So I think a4 is a useful thing, controlling a little queenside space. My king will go kingside. That's my thought. Black's development has been a bit weird. My castle. Do I want f3 just saying I have a stable center, or do I want to play f4 and really try to put pressure on them? Okay. That was almost certainly a mouse slip, but it definitely means I want to open stuff up. Oh, actually, no, it wasn't a mouse slip, because I was hitting h6. And they didn't want to give up h6. So they, I think, correctly make sure I can't open the f-file. But, oh, I was being silly. Um, in this position, they can't castle because of bishop h6. It's actually kind of annoying for them to develop. Their bishop doesn't have e6. Their bishop doesn't really have g4, because I just chase it. Bishop d7, how are they moving their queen? How are they ever getting their king anywhere? Their weird development is already giving them problems. Hmm. Bishop g7 helps their king get to a good square, but I feel I can play knight d5 and then queen c3, and I'm crashing through on f6. I feel their king is improved, but it's also very vulnerable there. Because queen c3 seems a very serious threat. I might also play f5, but I do not want to give them this knight square, because that blocks the diagonal, and it's just a great knight square for them. So I kind of, I like my central pawns, I feel they control squares. My big idea here is just queen c3. I think I can do it. They might have to play f6. And then I can't bust through with e5 yet, but it's certainly looking scary for them. I think this is a very good position. Yeah. Hmm. So they want to play bishop e6 and bishop takes d5. I don't really see a good way to prevent this. So I'm just going to make sure my pawns are solid. Maybe I want b4, b5. Because if I can displace this knight, then it can't get to e5. Then I can start looking to play f5 or e5, either because I've driven away a defender, or because if I play f5, I'm not conceding as critical a square. Now, their rook would be a good occupier of e5, but their knight is an even better one. So I like the idea of b4, b5, just because I think this knight is their best place piece. I'd expect bishop e6 here. They seem to have disconnected. But I think their their opening was just very shaky. Um, h6 seems unnecessary and a little weakening, and it was the reason they felt obliged to play king f8 later. Um, they're not really threatening f5, it just opens up too much when they're behind in development. So it's just not obvious what black should do. And I think this is a pretty tough position. I like when it says you win in 25 seconds when there are 25 seconds left. You know, that's not actually uh, speeding up the result. But Okay, they're back. They did play bishop d5. I will play b4. Now, maybe I don't want b5 because they can take and then play knight a5, and that might be a nice square for the knight. But I thought hinting at this would be a little trying for them. But maybe it doesn't do anything. So if not that, what's another idea?
I'm gonna play queen b2. No, I'm not. I don't have a plan. Should have been thinking better. So if I play f5, I give up e5, and I don't like that. What about h4? Try to play h5, because that seems annoying for them to beat. All right. They have potentially created another weakness for themselves. Now if I play queen g3, f5 is a serious threat. They could take and then take, but I can't imagine that their king's not getting blown open there. I could take this way and get b7. But then my bishop's kind of almost trapped. So what about e d5? Maybe the bishop coming to d3. I play f5? Yes, I can. Because knight takes, I have to play... Oh, rook e8, knight g3, rook d8. They take. Oops. What have I done? Have I blown it? Because rook f5... I have to go faster. They have rookie one. Oh no, this is this has gone horribly wrong. All right, got to try to attack. Check. I get f5 now, and then h5 is weak. Maybe bishop d3. They can't block with the queen. Uh, maybe try to get to e6. Okay, somehow only one because they they disconnected. Ah, oh, wow, man, did I blow that one? All right. Uh, let's see how I should have crashed through around move 17. Did it like b4? That was one of my more creative tries. No, I should just crash through. e5. Boom. And if d e5, f e5... If they take on d5, I take on f6, and then take on e8, and then d5. Okay, fair enough. If they take here, do I just crash through? Or even better, knight f6. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. So I missed I missed a huge opportunity in e5. I played this kind of slow improvement move. And then I couldn't find a plan, and also I was a little tied to this. So I eventually went for h4, which was fine. And now I thought queen g3, but they have this bishop d5. And I should take back bishop. Okay. Bishop takes d5, knight takes b4, f5. Right, this wins. Okay. So they had to they had to come to e7 either way. So then e takes d5 was just shutting off my bishop for no reason and failing to support f5. I should now support it with bishop d3. f5 was a big mistake, and I am worse. All right, well, that was a uh, quite tragic collapse, but I got away with it due to a disconnect. One for one. I'll take it, but all right. Of course, I'm trying to play a classical Sicilian, so of course I do not get black. Play a four knights. I feel like I haven't played that for a while. Uh, only a three knights, but this line is known to be pretty good for white. Because white gets a huge center, and the displaced king I don't think is uh, that big a problem. I always get myself into trouble. So knight g4 is interesting. Wait, what? Ah, takes queen b6. Okay, so bishop b3. Make sure everything's defended. And now, probably just queen d2, control f4, bishop c4, rook f1. I like my position. If d5, I play e5, I think. Hmm. Okay, let's prevent them playing d5. Yeah, I'll take that. I'm a pawn grubber. No shame in that. Threatening rook f1 and bishop f7, so they should castle. They didn't castle. So they're just going to give up the queen? I don't think they should be able to get away with this. Try to ruin their pawn structure. Um, if I get the knight off h3, king h2, my king's always safe over there. They don't have anything that can attack the dark squares. This I thought I pin. But I could also play something like queen b4. Threatening mate on e7, and if knight g5, queen b5 check, and I grab the knight? I think I'll go for this. This seems cute. Queen e3, f5, I didn't see a follow-up. I thought their knight had a good square. Now they can't really keep their knight on a good square. Maybe they can play f6, actually, but... Yeah. Queen b5 takes g5. 
I would expect castles. I'll play h3, king h2. Should probably try to control e2. Yeah. Hmm. They get bishop b5. It's okay. King h2. Ugh. Am I blowing this? If bishop c6, I have d5. I, I, something's gone really wrong here. Let's start getting my pawns off to second. Try to try to use my majority. D5, rook e5. Ugh. I blew it. Huh. Alright, I'm just gonna go for the end game with these slightly better pawns, but ugh. Man, I blew this. Hopefully they hang mate in one. Both these games have been a story of, I think I mostly do some reasonable things and get a very nice position, and then everything goes horribly wrong. This is a good move. Um, I can play b5, then rook e2, probably. Maybe c3. Ugh. Okay, let's get behind their pawn. Try to get my rook to c7. Okay. Now I have two passers. Two passers is pretty good. I think we're winning again. I'm gonna... Put my rook on b6 and slowly frog march the pawns forward. It's kind of the standard thing to do. And hope I don't somehow get mated by like rook a2, f4, f3. Okay. Uh, slowly moving the pawns up. Take that. Inching them forward. Gotta not help mate myself, but I should be able to avoid that. It's nice that my rook has checks from behind if their king comes forward. Now that we're behind specifically the g-pawn, it's very hard for them to kind of set up a mating net. And I'm, of course, threatening to queen. So I think I somehow got away with this one, but again, totally blew it in the late middle game. G3, no, I don't see it. G3 is the point, uh, ooh, G3, yeah, because my queen's undefended. Ah, that was sneaky. Okay. Should have thought a bit more. Uh, let's get my rook behind my pawn. They can check once, but not twice. And they will be tied down to b7. So they have to play rook b8. Now my king comes forward, wins f5. They can never win my pawn because they're just lost in the king and pawn endgame. So they have to just sit here. And if they move the rook, I just play b8 and win. Remove that. So okay. <laughs> Despite many trials and tribulations on the way here, this is a pretty trivial one. I will hide behind the pawn. Yeah, okay. Two for two. Um, I don't know, man. FM Mark Plotkin. I had a chess playing friend whose last name was Plotkin. It was very good. Never made master, but very easily could have. I think peaked at 2190. Okay, we had a plan. Classical Sicilian. Will we face knight of three? Of course not. Let's play g6. Now uh, let's not play g6. Let's play knight c6. Win some time against that queen. Make sure e5 is, doesn't come. I'm gonna prepare bishop c5, which looks pretty ridiculous, but like, why not? Queen g3, castles, bishop h6. 
Hmm, maybe I don't want that. Do I have a lot of choice? Hmm, they don't want that either. Alright, I will take that and play knight h5 if bishop takes. Bishop did not take. I don't like my position. And I'm not sure what I did wrong. Okay. I'm given a little time to um, pressure e4, then I feel a bit better. Specifically, Plonka Knight on e5 seems very helpful. And then I really need to control d5. They can take on e5. I assume I have compensation if so. But maybe that's ridiculous. Maybe just ridiculous. I don't want to allow bishop g5, so I'm going to move the knight first. All right, we're just down a pawn. But we have the c-file. And then the Sicilian, if you have the c-file, you have dreams. Oops. Ooh. Okay. With their king on a2, I get some more tactical possibilities with bishop a2. For instance, I can play knight e5 here. They have bishop b5? I don't think so. Bishop b5, I mean. Hmm. Hmm. Let's just go for the knight. Try to drive away a defender if they're king's, uh, queen side. Knight c5. Could have also played knight e5. That might have been better. I'm thinking about coming to a4 at some point. But I think I should have gone knight e5 to go to c4. And the point just being they can't take due to bishop here. Do we go for it? Bishop a3, knight d3, queen a3? I want to go for it. What's the move order? Probably knight d3 to start. Because if queen takes, maybe bishop c4? Yeah, I think so. Make sure their queen is sort of disconnected from the defense of everything. Maybe they have knight d5 there, though, actually. Bishop d3, knight e7, bishop e7, cd3. Not sure. Okay, I think I will play bishop c4. Make a quick move. I did calculate something and it looked okay, so hopefully it is. Because their pawns are a little shaky. I can play bishop c5, but that hangs a bishop. Keep activating. Rook d8. I still want to sack on a3. I think the fun of this game is going to be going for mate. Ah. Bishop d5, bishop b4 is annoying. Oh, have I blown this? I'd have blown this. Huh. Okay, I think I have to play rook d5. And then I don't think I can sack the bishop anymore. Yeah. Ah. Gonna play queen c7 next, I think. Yeah. I gotta avoid back ranks and other checkmates. I hope they sack the material. They rudely didn't. Okay. The. Bad position, bad clock. It's all bad. So queen f7, rook e7. Let's go to c5. Ah, uh, just rook e7. Ah, uh, this works too. Okay, I can resign this one, I think. Yeah. Alright, really blew that one. Shouldn't have hung the pawn. Actually, I should go back earlier, because, like, I should know what to do against 2d4. That seems a ridiculous move. Knight f6, knight c3, d5. Okay, I should just hit with d5. If e5, d4, 
If e takes d5, knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, yeah. Black is an extra center pawn. Yeah, okay. Alright, that was a sad one to lose, but I think they did comfortably outplay me. Especially at the end, but throughout. It's hard to point to a stretch of that game where I got optimistic somewhere kind of late and then it never went anywhere. All right. Sadly, didn't get the opening I've been hoping to play, and we're going to get three whites this video. Okay. When they play d6, I think kind of open the center against their more passive setup. Play bishop e3, bishop e2. Maybe castle queenside. Yeah. Let's go for it. Rook hg1, g4. Maybe. Let's push. I would consider like b5 for them. I think c5 is a little weakening. Alright, they did a slightly different way. Per usual, opposite side castling games are, you know, good fun for everyone. Threatening f5. Ooh, now, much like last game, I can use this as a hook to play against. But how do I want to take back? g5, fg5. What do I want to play there? I don't know. Let's actually leave it for a turn. Yeah. If I'm not sure what to do about something, I could have played h4 to, you know, build up g5, intending to take back h. I thought maybe... Maybe this has a little more sting where I can take back rook. They can take and play bishop a2. I think I'll play rook e1 and hope their queen's misplaced. Thinking about f5, f6. c5, maybe I play f5. I'm not sure. Okay, they prevented it. Let's hit the queen. See where you're going. You guess like queen f7. But then I can play g6 if one. Do not want to queen trade. I think this is better move than c3. Bishop f5 and rook e7, rook e7 right away. Do I have to worry about my queen side? I hope not. Alright, let's play rook e7. Queen a2, b3, or rook g7. Yeah, let's start with rook e7, because if rook f7, I can take and then take f5. Now, if queen a2, probably b3. Huh. Why not? Well, I want to throw in g6, I think. Queen d4 forcing queens off also made a lot of sense, but this seems strong. So why not? And bishop h7. Bishop h7 winning. Bishop h7, king h7, rook g7. Uh, I want this. I want the fancy, but I shouldn't. I shouldn't go for the fancy. Simple chess. I'm up a piece. I know I can win that. Still have two wonderful bishops. Simple chess. No need to uh, try to do anything clever. Alright, gonna try to do something slightly clever. It's not that clever, though. Be cool if we could set up a meeting that, though. Like FG6. Should be 8. Let's just come back. Check on C4. Try to play Rook G7, check, yeah.
Bishops, man. They're a fun piece. Try to play bishop b5 check. That seems useful. I'm going to guess rook e8, except that it loses a rook, so maybe rook d8. It's hard for them to activate their pieces. And like rook d8, bishop b5 check, followed by bishop c7 if they go to b6. I guess they can go to d5 there. What if I threaten f6? Because if knight d7, I have bishop b5. And I like taking this way, because if bishop b5, they can come forward. And I'm trying to keep their king stuck in. Yeah, let's slowly cut down their king squares. And play rook f7 next. Yeah, that does not prevent it. Okay. Yeah. Three for four. And can we get a closed Sicilian? Ooh, looking promising. Oh, oh, just a move away. One move away. So if we take on e4, they have a queen a4 check, grabbing my knight. So now I'm threatening to take, so I'll play d3. Maybe make something happen on the queen side. Make sure I control e5. That is their. That is their break. I might take on c4, because I hit a2 after. Now I don't. I can take on e4. I don't see the problem. I try not to be afraid of ghosts. I've said that a lot, but I really do try. I think I'm hitting c4 and b2, maybe. I think in a lot of ways I play chess very cautiously and try to play stable structures and maybe being a pawn grubber does go along with that as a discovered attack on a2 and gets my center a little more secure i might like to play e5 i'm not sure okay i'll take this and take a2 get good pressure against b2 so i think i play very kind of um cautious chess in general. I think this threatens rook b8. But I try to, um, if I don't see the reason, like maybe I'm cautious because I feel like it creates a weak square, but if I don't see like the explicit weakness being created, I really try to um, force them to show it. If it's not there, I do great. If it is there, hopefully I learn something. I think it's easy. What? Oh, bishop d6. I'm not sure about this. I have queen g5, and I'm on c1. There are lots of pieces hanging. <laughs> lots of pieces hanging. I just keep them. My queen is now defended, so if they play like queen b5, I can move the bishop. It's not pinned. If knight takes d5, I can take back queen. Ooh, they have bishop c4 at the end. Oh, I'm lucky that the queen's it. Okay. So now I should move the bishop out of the way. Ooh, but where? Maybe e4? Because if I go to a8 and they trade queens, they have rook c8 at the end. And that... Oh no, my bishop's defended on a8. I have a rook. Hmm. I want to go to the more stable square, which is a8, but I feel like e4, if it's not immediately hit, is better. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the stable square. I don't know. It's gonna be a bit tricky to untangle. Fair enough. Everything is defended, just the question is, what do I do now? And I don't know. Okay. 
If I move the bishop out of the way, I threaten rook a8. They're going to play bishop c4. Bishop c4 is a real threat. Okay. Threatening either rook or queen takes b2, which hits f2 and their queen. So I think rook b2. If queen a8, queen f2, and then I take e3, and they play bishop c4, and it's all very scary. But I think, think good for me. I think their king has more problems than mine. There's bishop c4, rook b1, and then queen f4, g3, queen f2 forces queens off. That's what I calculated anyway. But it looks right. Check. You can also play queen g1, of course, but this line looks good enough, so don't. Ooh, should I play a rook b2? I should do it this move order, because this way they can't give up their queen. They're just mated, because king g1, queen f2, not queen c1, because bishop f1. But this way, I can play queen c1. Alright, I calculated something and it worked for once. So, uh, 4 for 5. Did not get a classical Sicilian. Woe is me. I think I'll record a bullet video and hope for a classical Sicilian there. Cheers.